welcome back to the Sound Centric Podcast. I am your host, Adam Dash, and today we are joined by a man who is running one of the biggest, most successful, coolest hip hop pages in all of social media. He runs Overtime Fits, but he also runs Overtime Sound with over 65,000 followers. He's interviewed people like Doc from Earth Gang, Ruben Vincent, who currently is opening for Boz on this tour, Annabelle of That Good Shit, Soul Child, shout out to South Jersey and Camden, Dylan Forrester, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Adam. It's a pleasure, man. So you were telling me a couple weeks ago about the story behind Overtime reaching out to you because they said... We have every single channel right now. We have Overtime Fits. We have Overtime Sports. But we don't have something covering music yet. Tell me about the story about them reaching out to you to run that and what your idea initially was to make this different from other pages. Yeah, totally. Um, So I started with Overtime a little over five years ago um, on the lifestyle and apparel team. So like our entire e-commerce merch operation um and for the past like four years and change or so i've been running their socials like you just mentioned overtime fits on instagram tiktok um which has been great because lifestyle uh streetwear stuff like that has always kind of just like been a huge passion of mine um but at my core besides being a huge sports basketball specific fan um i'm a huge huge music nerd i grew up right in the in the heart of the blog era and my formative years were right right pop period exactly right at its peak um so music's always been a huge passion of mine um like you mentioned um over time had a page for every single interest um in a gen z kid's life whether that's sport uh basketball football soccer sneakers fashion video games you name it we had we had the entire gambit except for music um Mm -hmm. and the ceo of overtime dan porter absolute legend um came to me over at my desk one day and he was like yo, is Yeezus in your top five Kanye albums of all time? And I was like, what? What you just said? And he was like, yeah, is Yeezus in your top five? I'm like, uh, I don't know, maybe it's number five or something. I got to think about that. He's like, all right, while you think about that, think about this. Um, we need a page <laughs> for music. I think you're the perfect person to run it for us. I don't know what it's called, what the account looks like, what platform, what the content strategy is. But ultimately, that's up for you to decide. So throw some stuff at the wall, see what sticks. And once you have a proof of concept, I'll give it the green light and off and running from there. And... Uh, After some intense trial and error, um, (laughs) given that I was not talent for overtime, nor was I like a video editor or content creator at the time, um, something something finally clicked. I made a video one day about the uh, the original version of "Miss Me" by Drake and Lil Wayne um, that was ever uploaded to HotNewHipHop.com. It was called "All Night Long." Didn't have Wayne yet. Had a different hook, um, which is arguably better than the one that actually made the (laughs) album. But that's a different story for a different day. Um, And yeah, overnight got like 300,000 views. The account grew like 5,000 followers. And then it was just rinse and repeat a little from there. Um, and, you know, all the social metrics were just climbing, going up, 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 which was great for me. Um, lo and behold, Overtime Sound was born. And ever since then, I've kind of just been trying to perfect the craft that is content creation for hip hop and R&B and music specific uh, and, and music as a whole. Um the name of the game for me is kind of it's it's twofold it's it's curation and coverage yeah. so um like any prominent media outlet you know covering the biggest and best in music um artists stories songs you name it um and then also curation um which is trying to uh give a voice to people who and artists who aren't typically covered by the bigger outlets yeah. that's kind of what overtime was when it first started it was let's see how many high school hoopers we could put on and, and give a platform yeah. to. Um, and that's ultimately what I'm trying, I'm striving to do on the overtime sound uh, vertical as well. Yeah. That's so awesome. Cause I've said to you before this, that's the goal of my platform just putting on for those artists that necessarily can't get on sway in the morning yet or get on funk flex. And I heard J Cole say this once, I'm not going to quote this exactly correct, but he talked about how if you make music that you love to do and it doesn't work out, at least you can say, I tried doing what I wanted to do and it just exactly. didn't work. If you try to make a hit song and then that doesn't work, it feels a lot worse because it's like I tried to do what would be popular, but it didn't. It failed and now I feel worse because I didn't even like the music anyway. Do you yeah. deal with that when making content where there's certain content that you're like, I'm not even interested in this personally, but I know it's a big thing right now? Or are you always trying to do exactly what you want where it's like, I love Drake, so I'm going to make this like deep cut Drake historical video 
And if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, I enjoyed making this video. Um, it's definitely, it's, there's definitely a, it's a mixture of both. I mean, you, you can't be a successful, um, and, and huge, uh, content engine if ultimately you're not covering stuff that you don't want to cover um, yeah. sometimes you just like you have to have a voice or an opinion on it um, mm -hmm. whether or not you like it but mostly I try and stay like tried and true to what I'm truly passionate about yeah. um, and, and stuff that I would look back on afterwards and say like wow I'm proud I did this or I'm happy I did this because not many other people are doing it um yeah so there's always a balance you know ultimately I do make stuff that like or cover stuff that like I'm not really trying to cover or yeah. like shed too much light upon but um <laughs> yeah yeah you, you got to play both sides a little bit yeah and so you find you bring on a lot of artists that might be not known now and the goal is that these people are so talented that it's only a matter of time before they blow up I know where I go to find curators and content. I'm addicted to Twitter, so I follow just so many people. Team mm -hmm. Dreamville is where I found Soul Child. But I'm curious, where do you go to find music? Um, honestly, it's it's changed. My, my, my music consumption habits have definitely changed drastically over the course of the last couple of years, just given yeah. the way like the streaming landscape has kind of transformed and, and unfolded. Um, I would say one consistent source of new music for me has always been and will always be as long as it's still up and running is Selection, um, one of the best music collectives, um, labels, radio shows, whatever you want to call it. It's, mm -hmm. it's It doesn't really have one label, um, but they are always shedding light upon the brightest stars of tomorrow. Um, and honestly, TikTok has like really become yeah. my my main source of consumption. Um, I follow a bunch of great curators and and content creators um, like Annabelle, who you mentioned, yeah. um, Damon, who who like is one of the most tapped into the underground I've ever met. Um, J. Bell, J. Gov, Kendall XL, mm. like all these guys on TikTok are like really curating. Uh, also, Travis George with Sunday Sauce, also like curating amazing vibes and shedding light upon artists that i would have never heard of before without their help also elsie um she's amazing yeah. as well shout out to elsie her videos are crazy yeah she, hers just hit 100k in one day today it's insane yeah i've always she's, when i'm making when i make yeah, TikTok I was just say she's awesome. yeah. yeah i try to balance like hers are so well made and i've tried to like put so many details in the video where it just gets hit at that 300 uh wall that many yeah. people try to overcome and it's like, damn, was it even worth it? But the goal is to have, that I'm having fun while making it. So just to do it because I enjoy doing it. And if it works, it works. But yeah. that 300 wall, it's a, it's a bitch. It's, it's the worst thing ever to see. Um, <laughs> but eclipsing it is, uh, you know, you never know what could happen once you eclipse it. <laughs> yeah. And you uh, mentioned streaming. And it's been a big thing talking about recently because Kanye said that he is going to sell uh, Vultures 2 for $20, which is too much money for how good Vultures 1 was. But that's my that's my opinion. And James Blake came out yesterday saying that he's going to be using a new platform. I don't remember what the name was, but it's basically a way that he can just drop music, unreleased music, chat with fans, and it would be a subscription model of, I think it was either 10 or $20 a month. And in my opinion, the concept makes sense. That is just too much money, sadly, in this day where – I can pay $10 a month for access to every song ever. So I'm curious, do you have yeah. thoughts on what could potentially be a way for artists to make more money off of their off of streaming? I don't, it's, it's such a, a loaded question. Um, I know. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> Let's solve the entire issue right now. I don't know. I, I don't foresee a future where artists will just walk away from streaming and like actually be yeah. like – fully d to c um i i just don't really see that ever happening to be honest um yeah but i mean there is a world where like there's you know there's a way that that artists can do that to an extent i mean like it's kind of already been done in the past where like yeah i think uh who was it like i think it was like most f and or it was black star yeah. i think who, who yeah, did they that dropped on the podcast website. I forget what it was. But yeah, yeah like doing it on there. Doing it behind a paywall and stuff. I just don't really see like 
I per- I mean, ob- besides from the financial aspect, like I don't really see a, 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 a an upside to doing that because ultimately you want your music to reach the masses. Like yeah. there's only your true core fan base is ever going to hear that. And even a smaller subset is actually going to be willing to pay for it. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I don't really foresee like a, a world where, you know, music behind a paywall is is going to ever eclipse paying ten ninety nine a month, like you said, yeah. for every song you could ever imagine, ever pretty much. Yeah, and I think a lot of these maybe older artists. When I say older, I don't mean like actual old, but just over thirty years old. Maybe yeah. they think about when they were growing up and they would pay ten dollars for a CD, and it's just different now. That being said, I feel like if they did a fifty cent what per month subscription to be able to chat with the artists and subscribe, and say you have a million monthly listeners. I think you can get it a thousand. If you're someone like James Blake, who has like a lot of dedicated fans, probably, I think fifty cents or one dollar a month they would do, and that could add up over time to be making a decent amount, maybe. Yeah, I, I just feel like the the paying for like individual songs and projects and music, like is ne- I feel like that's never really gonna come back into play other than like the vinyl collectible aspect. Yeah. It's just like all the money is now in and touring and what you could do with live performances, um, which also doesn't even really seem to be that lucrative for a lot of people. So um, it's definitely a complicated landscape, but I don't know. I've seen artists recently using the website Even. So Chris Patrick is dropping a project April 3rd called The Calm, and it came out, this is going to come out next week, but it came out Wednesday the, I'm trying to count backwards, 19th. No, 20th. That was yesterday. Uh, came yeah, out exactly. the 20th. And you could buy it for $10 beforehand. And you get added to a chat where you can personally talk with Chris. And there's like level, levels of purchases. So if you did $50, uh, you got like a signed vinyl from him. If you did 100 you got free tickets to a concert and a personal like call from him. And I think things like that, being creative, um, can really work now. If you like release an album a month early for fans who pay for it. Or I've seen artists start doing having chats where fans can help make the album with them. And That's pretty cool. Art, fans help, like, oh, I think this song should be the first song. So they choose the order of the music. They choose maybe a feature. They choose which song should make it and not make it. So I've seen some cool, like, DIY methods of artists trying to get fans as involved as possible. Yeah, that's very cool. It's definitely thinking outside the box. Um, but, you know, I wonder how um, how often an artist will want to replicate that process for, yeah. for projects you know for like a one-time thing to say you did it that's probably very cool and like an awesome experience yeah, yeah. for everybody involved um but you know like I, I don't know personally if i was an artist i wouldn't want to do that every single time yeah. i released a project or was making one yeah it's a it's a lot of work and album rollouts are not as popular as a thing which stinks because i think it's the coolest thing and someone like schoolboy q just did an amazing rollout for blue lips where he was mm-hmm. interacting with fans i get so annoyed at artists that like are just compl- I don't like mystery artists. That <laughs> it's one thing if like you want to be a private person, but people who are just mysterious for the sake of like let me not go to the concert people paid money for annoy me. Yeah. But that being said, J Cole to me is one of the king of rollouts. He's so good at always dropping like these little documentaries that come out before. Um, he did it with the off season. He did it with For Your Eyes Only, mm-hmm. and now he's dropping a new series called Might Delete Later. He dropped one. I'm not sure now at this point it was a month ago, maybe more than a month ago. Had some songs, showed the tour with Drake, and he just dropped another one with another amazing verse. Because I mean, he's my goat, so some yeah. people said it wasn't that great. <laughs> I, thought it, I thought it was amazing, and it, it showed a Boz feature on there. There was one song that sounded like, uh, I don't know, he just had bangers. We heard Conductor Williams on one of the videos. Yep. What are your expectations for an album that has been teased since 2018, which might be the longest teased album ever? <laughs> For an album yeah. that's actually gonna drop. <laughs> yeah. Um I mean, yeah, Cole is like more or less my goat as well. Like there we he, go. he's he's my favorite rapper, probably yeah. ever, right up there with Jay Z. Um but yeah, my expectations, I, I, I think it's it's I, I can't expect anything less than greatness. It's gonna yeah. be it's gonna be amazing. I mean works allegedly working with conductor metro i'm sure he's doing some more stuff with t-minus and uh and, and stuff so it's like yeah, i can't expect anything less than greatness and like yeah. a near perfect album in my view at least yeah. um he he never see, he never ceases to amaze me yeah 
who do you want featured on it? Because I love the offseason, and I was surprised by how much I love the 21 Savage song, how much I love the Lil Baby song. That being said, respectfully, I want those artists nowhere near the fall off. Yeah. I want the people that we've been waiting for. Obviously, Kendrick Lamar. It's in, it is insane that they have no songs together where they actually rap together because Kendrick's on the chorus of I'm blanking on the name, but the Forbidden song of Born Center, Forbidden yeah. Fruit. And they use the excuse like, oh, they have families and stuff. Like artists are making music now from across the world with each other. Like that's not a that's not an excuse. Get in the studio. Um, but who else do you want to see on the fall off? No, per, uh, to be perfectly honest, at this point in time, after me waiting for 15 plus years of that collab, um, I, I never want it to come at this point because I know it's it's not going to live up to expect it. Yeah, that's yeah. fair too. At this, I wish it happened in 2012, but sadly, it's 2024. Yeah. Um, I it, would love to see. I would love to see some old heads on the album. To be honest, get like Jay a on. lot of uh, that Jay would be that would be incredible considering. Their last outing together, I believe, was Mr. Nice Watch, which is like which, one of the worst songs of all time. <laughs> all, the beat on that is so <laughs> disgusting, and I mean that I, in a bad way. Oh, my Lord. Yeah, I hate that song. Um, <laughs> no, I would love to see some old heads on it. Um, like, I don't even know. Uh, it would be like having Nas would be a cool full, a cool full circle yeah. moment for Cole. Yeah. Um, I mean, Cameron, I believe, again, was on, like, one of the intros or something on one of these previewed songs, which would be crazy. Um, Who else? Um, Would love to see, like, some Smino action, because their recent collab, 90 Proof, I think it was called, was awesome. Summer Summer Walker, I would love to see a little. I don't don't know if he'd ever, like, choose to have a female R&B person other than Ari Lennox on his album. That's Um, fair, yeah. With with 90 Proof, it's actually that song was a Cole song at first, and Smino asked, "Can I put this on my album?" Wow! So that I'm not sure if it was meant for the fall off, but it was a J Cole song originally, and Smino that's, got the blessing to put it on the awesome. album. Good, good for Smino. Well deserved, honestly. Um, I love him. Yeah, would love to see that. Um, uh, I'm trying to think who else I would love to see on that album. Um, hmm. I don't need Drake, honestly, on it. I got... No, I'm, I got, I'm good. We got our songs. <laughs> I'm, I'm good on that. I'm good on that. I would love to see Black. I think that would be awesome. They okay, have yeah. a, a legendary collab already. It um, would be cool to see them link up for a second. Um, who else? Who else? I think yeah. J.I.D. would be cool. I'm not sure if it would happen. I mean, Boz I will have something on there, whether it be background yeah. vocals or... Yeah, he always they, plays a hand. Uh, always plays a hand in some sort of... Cole project. Yeah, um, yeah Jid, Jid would be, a, anybody from Dreamville would be cool. I don't think it'll happen necessarily. Um, yeah. But yeah, th- I, I also uh, definitely mirror your uh, your sentiment of I'm, I'm cool <laughs> on a little baby and uh, all that stuff. Yeah. I'm, I'm cool on that. Respectfully, they're, they're cool artists. I just, I need the greats on this. I don't need any more like Cole trying to show that he can reach the younger demographic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you do you believe that this is is his last album? Because I do not, whatsoever. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I was ready to say confidently that it would be his last album, but it might be his last album for a while. Which is yeah. fine, but you're 38 years old, dude, and like you're the best he's ever been. I think. Yeah, his his pen is as sharp as as as, as it's ever been. Um, but you can't you can't really retire from rap. You're always gonna. Right, you're, you're always gonna come back somehow. You don't gotta, you don't gotta tour. Like I don't care if I ever see you again out in person or another picture of you in Crocs, but just make music. You're so good at it. You're good. <laughs> yeah, God damn. Yeah, no, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think I can confidently say this will be his last album, but I do think it'll be his last project for a while. Yeah, and what I mean, this is all speculation, but so you released that picture years ago that showed the order of the albums, and it said it's a boy, and for a while he never talked about it, and was like, is this a thing? And maybe he just scrapped it, but then the Drake merch came out, and that poster was the Drake merch, and it's like, okay, it's a boy it has to be something. It's not a kid. There's no way he's like gambling on that. His kid is a boy, and that's not possible. Yeah, no, 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 no. So someone said on my episode two weeks ago, maybe it's a Kill Edward project, and I wouldn't be mad because I honestly uh, really wait, like the Kill. Oh, Kill Edward, Kill Edward, Kill Sorry, Edward. I yeah. what you said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my speculation um, is really nerdy. And it has come from yes. hours of 
scouring through Reddit posts. Um, Let's hear it. But my theory is that It's a Boy um, was just the moment in time leading up to the fall off. Um, ah, <laughs> since cause if you if, if you remember um, back to 2018 when he dropped KOD, um, the last track was 1985 yeah. intro to the fall off is what it was yes. called. And obviously the first the first song, uh, oh, the, sorry, not the first song, the opening bar was 1985. I arrived. Yeah. And that was his announcement to the world that like the, oh, okay. yeah. the, the next, the next up in hip hop is a boy and it's yeah. him. And he's showing that like, even in his old age, he could still out rap everybody and his pen could be as sharp as ever. Um, yeah. and then what's allegedly going to be his last album is the fall off. Um, yeah. Which it's obviously not going to be because it's going to be nothing short of greatness. So yeah. um, I, I don't think it's a boy is actually a project. I, I think it's rather just a time period, which has been the last three, four, three and a half, four years. Yeah, we've seen artists in the past really plan out their discographies. Like Kanye, going into it, he knew he had a trilogy of a college dropout, late registration, graduation. But I'd have never seen an artist so beforehand know he was making an album that he was willing to call a song the intro to an album on a different yeah. album. Like, he's gotten better in the last five years. I think there's a certain point where it's like, you just got to drop the music because you're going to keep critiquing it and being like, I'm better now. So like, yeah, you're gonna, I don't really like the 2019 songs anymore. You're going to just keep changing it. I'm, I, don't, I'm, I don't know if it was in one of those blogs or some other video that came out, but I think he said that like he's, had, he's been working yeah, on the fall versions. off like, yeah. since like – probably since like four year eyes only like 2014 era yeah um so yeah just just drop it already everybody's gonna love it <laughs> I, I would imagine it's coming soon given that he's gonna be performing again at dreamville in yeah you know two weeks maybe time a, maybe a single will drop beforehand yeah we'll see also this down be, for revenge yeah, of the dreamers five or, or four because d-day yeah, was I think, revenge of the dreamers yeah, yeah yeah i would love that as well i think all of the uh revenge of the dreamers project so far have been have been classics also yeah i had this debate two episodes ago. <laughs> it was a debate between is it a classic album or a classic moment i'm down to say it's a classic moment just agree with it but to me it was so it's the coolest idea in hip-hop history that they put together and it worked out so well i've watched that doc so many times yeah especially since they documented it with video um yeah i don't uh, i i think it's a classic moment i don't know if i'd say it's a classic album yeah. although i do run back to it a ton yeah, I listen to it all the time. Yeah. So another artist who dropped a snippet, who also is getting better with age, is Big Sean. Dropped another snippet yesterday of him freestyling over, I think it was a Hit Boy beat. And, you know, he dresses the big three. I don't, I don't think it was a shot at them. I think he's friends with all of them at this point, even though him and Kendrick had beef in the past. But what would you like to see out of a next Big Sean project? Because for me, I would love a Big Sean Alchemist project after I heard Palisades, <laughs> California. I've been preaching it. And I think that would be Sean's best album since Dark Sky Paradise. It's it's funny because every I feel like every one of these like blog era rappers, like the internet, the, the narrative around it is just I would love to see XYZ Alchemist album. Like <laughs> I, I have like a list of fifteen rappers that should Yeah, it's like and, and uh, <laughs> obviously Mask announced see, yeah, yesterday obviously that he's making an album. I'm like, like, no, that's not <laughs> who I wanted. <laughs> yeah. Um obviously anybody teaming up with the Alchemist would just be A one. But uh what would I like to see from a Big Sean album? I would love for him to just do something like solely dedicated to his core fans. Like he's obviously yeah. way past his his mentality of like trying to chase a single or a big radio hit. Um, he he's he has a handful of those. He has plenty. Yeah. Um, more than a lot of more than a lot of your favorite rappers. So. Um, I, I would love to see him get really back into like his introspective bag, um, yeah. and, and just make good music. I know that's what you ask of every artist. Um, but like, nah, I, feel you. I, I, w I would honestly, I would really love for him to make something very reminiscent of I decided because I think that is great album. I think that's by far his best album he's ever really? put out. Okay. Like it's, I don't even think it's close to be perfectly honest. Um, I, for me, it's Dark Sky, but that one, The Light, the first song on the album with Jeremiah, one of my favorite yeah. songs. It's a crazy album. Yeah, Sunday Morning Jetpack with The Dream is amazing. The track with Migos even is, is really good. Um, th there's a lot of really good stuff on that. I would love yeah. to see him make something 
very reminiscent of that because that, um, yeah, like I said, I, I truly think that's one of his best albums. It's, uh, yeah, he, he just, he was very, very introspective, reflective on his life and his mindset at that time. Um, he also linked up with a ton of, you know, Big, Big Sean is a, he's a great collaborator. He really, every time he, he's on a track with yeah. someone else, one of his peers, um, he really kind of just like reflects that energy, um, mm -hmm. really well. Um, and, uh, I, I would love to see some, some, some out of the box, more R and B softer side, Big yeah. Sean. I, I love that stuff. I love the track on Detroit too with Anderson Pack and Wale. Yeah. That yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Unreal. Actually, I gotta so, go back. I gotta go back and revisit Detroit too a little bit more. I kind of, I kind of threw that album. one away. Yeah, it's a really long album. I kind of brushed over that way too quickly. Yeah, and Sean's always. It's just maybe it's his perfect rap voice. He's really good at making a hit song. Like Wolves is a song with Post Malone. I just personally don't want that from like the next Sean album. But he yeah. is just really good at making like back like all these songs. He's just really good at making hit songs. It's yeah, it's it's effort it's effortless for him at this point. I mean, he he that's how he kind of came into the game. Like immediately, just had like yeah. I mean, what was uh what's that fun? What's the first time? It's finally famous. I think it has yeah, yeah, Marvin yeah. Marvin Gaye. It has my last. It has dance. Like half that album is hit songs. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's light work for him. Um, so obviously he knows how to do that really well. But some of my favorite um, you know, Sean records of all time are are the B side deep cuts. I like introspective Sean. Yeah. He loves doing it. So before we get into the next topic, we do a playlist title of the week. It is a way for us to shout out a new rising artist that we're loving. And also a way just to say how we're feeling this week and what's been highlighting the playlist. So Dylan, what's the song? What's the name of the playlist this week? One song I got to pick right now? That's how... Yeah. how no, we, we're, we, we can shout out more. We're never, we're never against highlighting multiple artists. Okay. Um... Let's see. Uh, I'm going to say there's a new um, – Jev just put out a song with Kirk Knight um, called Vintage, which is amazing. Jev is like one of my favorite rappers out right now. He's nice. Um, I'm, I'm obsessed with his style. He's, he's so talented. Um, someone else I'd say um, – we actually we talked about it before the show started, but Trevor Spitta, of course. Um, Stare at the Sun is like one of my favorites right now. Obsessed, obsessed with that. Um, yeah, that's that's like how I've started every single car ride for the past three days. Is that song? <laughs> yeah, it's it's absolutely fantastic. Um, let's see who else. Uh, um, I'm forgetting the name of the track on the Soul Child album. Um, it's called She's so nice yeah it's called come down with chris patrick um yeah. that is one of my favorite ones um been bumping non-stop recently what else who else can i highlight real quick um not a specific song but i just want to shout out ruben vincent because he is on tour with boz right now and just Fire. one of the brightest up-and-coming uh uh, artist and like, yeah. he, he's so reminiscent of, of golden age hip hop. If if you're mm -hmm. a fan of anything in the in the '90s blog era stuff, you will absolutely love Ruben Vincent. Um, and also Lord Sko. Um, cannot forget about Lord Sko. He is he is he is '90s hip hop in in yeah. a nutshell. He's a literally he's a time he's a walking time capsule. Yeah. Um, Pimp Socks is you know one of the best songs of 2023 in my opinion. Um, I was listening to the I don't know what the album's called, but the one that's like Big L inspired. Yeah, yeah. I listened to that for the first time like last week in the gym, and it was great. Uh, yeah, he's he's fantastic. He's he's really just got such like a vibe and an aura about him. Yeah. Um, also, uh, not really in that lane, but stepping more to the R and B side. Um, Kamari is just uh. Mm -hmm. what's a uh, brief nirvana i think is his album called but you know these four walls um is one of the most beautiful tracks i've ever heard drifting also from that is amazing um and now it seems it's crazy because it seems basic to say this but like jordan ward is is just the best to ever do it i think <laughs> i love it i am so excited not that you need to rush it in any way so that's I was on another podcast and I did my top five albums of the 2020s. 
and I had that at five just because it was my by far my favorite album last year. It could be number one of the decade. I just didn't know if it <laughs> had – maybe I'm just like too recency biased putting it at one right now. No, and this next album, I'm down for – to make him a top five artist for me ever. Like I'm yeah, no, ready it's, for it. It's not recency bias at all. It really is well deserving of of that ranking for sure. At least in my humble opinion, um, he's one of the most genuine human beings I've ever met and encountered in my life. His team is absolutely amazing. They're super talented um, and incredibly calculated. Uh, and just knowing who he's worked with and and done stuff with in the past, like it all it all just makes yeah. sense. Like he everything he's getting right now, he's very deserving of. Um, yeah. And I know him and Smino definitely has some songs from tour. So Jordan, I'm going to tweet this out. Please drop a song with Smino. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'll they, be my they favorite def- song. <laughs> they, they definitely got some stuff in the tuck. Um, and uh, yeah, that's really all I could think of right now. No, that, was, that, was, I, that was I did, impressive off the top of the head. Yeah, I try not to cheat anybody else that's ever been on the Overtime Sound uh, show before. You know I support you. And I'm sorry if I missed out <laughs> on your name. <laughs> yeah, that's always that's always a scary part. A lot of artists that I'm friendly with that I des- that deserve a shout out always, and that's the, that's the goal of finding new outlets besides this, just to yeah. give artists a shout out. Oh, for and me uh, this week. and oh. and Yoshi, sorry, and Yoshi T. If you haven't checked out Yoshi T, he is like, yeah, he's Word. one of he's one, he's one of the coolest, most awesome humans ever. His music is uh, insane, insane. Yeah. So I mentioned this artist before, but Chris Patrick dropping a new mixtape. Uh, mm-hmm. He went back home for this one, similar to Cole going back to that to Muhammad's crib and going back. <laughs> yeah. Whenever an artist, whenever an artist goes back home and makes an album, they just make a, they just make amazing music. It's just something about being was at it, home. Was it your? I don't know if it was your tweet or if it was someone else's. It was like if your album cover has your childhood bedroom. That was me. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah, it's guaranteed to be. It's it's a lock for for great. Yeah, it's facts. Yeah, it so is. <laughs> I. Paid for the project because I'm a huge Chris supporter. I wanted to support any way I could. Um, it is amazing. There's a, It is so vulnerable, and it's a mixture of – he's got some bangers that are catchy songs. He's got – I can't even – he's just one of those intricate rappers. Like He's just such a smart dude, and it's, it's an amazing album. So people, if you go on Even, you should purchase that and support Chris. Or just wait till it streams, and you can bump it and go see him on tour or something because that album is incredible. And I also want to give a shout out to my guy, Mike Quill, who dropped this song, I-K-I-G-A-I. Mike is from England. I'm not sure where in England. Sorry, Mike. Wow. I don't want to disrespect that. But he is amazing and very, just very deep music. And I loved it. So shout out to Mike. Yeah, I'm not sure, I'm, not sure I'm, I'm familiar, but I'll definitely have to check that out. And uh, yeah, Chris Patrick is, he's one of the most talented out. He really is. He's awesome. Yeah, he's the one. <laughs> so... We just, I'm not sure if you saw this today, um, but Four Bats, a song was leaked with uh, Kanye West on yeah. the song. It is an awful verse, and <laughs> that's disappointing for if you're Four Bats. I don't know how you react because Kanye, so you've got to release it, but it's also not good. That being said, this man has three songs out, and he already has Drake, Kanye, and even more co signs from other amazing artists. And it sparked a huge discussion of what is an industry plan? Is it a real thing? Is it something that we just say because we can't understand someone's success? It's the same way like with the pyramids. People are like, it was aliens because we can't comprehend how they were able to do it. So that's the easy sellout. And people now just go, oh, he's a he's an industry plant because they can't understand the marketing behind or whatever. What is your opinion of this drastically fast rise to fame? Um what are you like with four bats specifically, or yeah. just are you generally speaking about industry plants? Let's say him specifically because his is faster than anyone I've ever seen, probably ever. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely very reminiscent of like an ice spice per se. Um, yeah, it's. I mean, personally, I think- like I, I have, I have, I have no beef or issue with this specific instance because, like, the music is good as, and it clearly resonates with people. Yeah. Um, beyond, I mean, like, we'll see you when like he actually tours or whatever like if it actually translates to ticket sales and whatever but like i i don't have an i personally like all of four four bats is four songs three songs (laughs) that he has um i've liked everyone the visual his visuals are great um and it's he's uh, there's nothing not to like honestly um i i don't want to hate just for the sake of hating if i actually had an issue or some sort of critique i would definitely let you know but i i I really don't 
Um, but I think that we need as a society and a, and a community around music need to understand that, um, the term industry plan, like it, it, it shouldn't have as negative of a connotation as it does. Like it's mm-hmm. not always a bad thing. Like certain people are industry plants because they deserve that fame and are actually that talented. They now just have yeah. like a budget and a huge marketing team behind them. Yeah. Um, it's not always a bad thing. And, you know, people like some people that were, quote unquote industry plants like deserve to be that famous and deserve to have Mm. their music reach the masses and deserve to have that type of money put behind them so they could create the art that people know they're capable of in certain instances it obviously has not panned out like that um but in a lot um it has so i I just think you know the 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 connotation um of the word kind of needs to and people's perception of the word needs to change a little bit because now it just gets tossed around like you know like a football yeah and i think to your comparison to ice spice i think the difference is the type of music they make so i was in college last year when ice spice was going crazy and that music is like hyped up music so like i it didn't feel like it was out of nowhere because i heard the songs at parties playing constantly and maybe it's a little different with r&b music because you're not going to be hearing that outside necessarily being played so people are like who's even playing this guy but it's like people are playing it like while they're driving or playing it relaxing or a different setting than ice spice that being said i'm curious on your thoughts if he can do a whole career out of just doing the hot the pitched up voice thing um like maybe uh i, I don't know it's it's so like, tough to I, say like no, nothing I, in in music and hip-hop specifically seems to have any sort of longevity um you know yeah. but behind it these days like everything is the 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 landscape just shifts and changes so quickly these days. Like, sure. I guess, will there always be people who love that sound? Um, and like people that are right now in their formative years, like really having an affinity towards him that will just never detach and and let that go. Sure. Probably. So like, I'm sure he'll have supporters for as long as he continues to, to do this and make music. But I mean, will he always like, how long will this, this, yeah. peak fandom be he hasn't even he, he has he doesn't have any projects out he has four songs he hasn't done a That's live insane. show ever like let's see how he performs live let's see how he how yeah. he sells tickets and and can do uh, and collaborate with other artists and stuff and yeah. so it's it's tough to say right now i don't want to go out on a limb and make any any uh yeah any any crazy assumptions or, or predictions, but mm-hmm. I think it'll be very telling when, if and when he decides to go on his first tour, whether or not yeah. it'll it'll actually pan out. So my fear for that is we're seeing a lot of artists these days, quote unquote, skip steps. So a lot of people used to call it Jack Harlow an industry plan. He's always come back and been like, I used to perform for ten people. That was a thing. He was like performing in small Kentucky bars and stuff. So he went through those steps, even though people thought he just like appeared randomly. That being said. We've seen so many artists who've just started on the festival stage for their first concert ever, and that's not a good idea. And yeah. especially with this genre of music he makes, it's not hyped up music. So it's not if he goes on a festival stage for his first performance ever, or like Drake brings him out to like go on a, a little bit run on the tour. I'm just afraid for him that it might be like uncomfortable because you got to develop like what your stage presence is at these like Ex- small clubs. Yeah, totally. I mean listen like if he has twenty thousand people who are willing to buy tickets to see him perform live yeah. like then by all means go perform at msg like yeah go <laughs> go do it but like like you said like i feel like his music is perfect for the ballroom or small theater yeah type or i don't know maybe he doesn't have any aspiration to ever perform live you know like yeah. maybe that's just not in his in his uh in his future but um yeah definitely people there's there's nothing wrong with performing at the ballroom or small theater level like that's honestly i I bet if you asked any uh hip-hop or r&b fan around my age like give me your top concert give me your top five concerts ever uh, at least three of them will be concerts from that size venue because Mm -hmm. you know outside of like the first concert i ever went to um which was Jay Z and Eminem at Yankee Stadium, the home and home tour, Crazy show. <laughs> and like one and one or two Drake shows. I would say every one of the best concerts I ever been to were at like a 
you know, a Bowery ballroom, Terminal 5, yeah. Webster Hall type venue, um, House of Blues, and like being able to see your favorite artist in that intimate of a setting, like there's nothing better than Sick. that. Yeah. yeah. It's the best. And so to this conversation, they're talking about artists rising really fast. Nelly recently said that his era of hip hop was the hardest to come up in. I'm curious, do you think that's correct or do you think it's harder now? Uh, it's it's tough because there were such fewer opportunities to break into the quote unquote mainstream back when Nelly was coming up. So I do hear him from that point. Like there was only such limited spots and the people who filled them up were Jay-Z, 50 Cent, Kanye, Wayne, you know, Ja Rule, whatever, like Eminem. Um, like, it, yeah, it's, it's, cr- if you have those people standing in front of you, it's, you know, it's pretty fucking hard. Yeah. Um, but now I would say that due to the oversaturation of, of the market and like the, also I would say now the, cons- the consumer is also the laziest they've ever been just cause they have mm-hmm. everything at their fingertips and they're not necessarily willing to virtually create dig, um, yeah. is, is, it makes it incredibly hard now. Like what's going to separate you? Everybody has, you know, the option and ability to make a song in their bedroom and make a video for it and release short form content to promote it. Like everybody has the same tools. It's a very even playing field these days. Mm -hmm. Um, So that makes you need to, uh, that makes it that much harder to stick out and be a diamond in the rough. Um, So yeah, but there's pros and cons to both eras. Um, I'll, I, I'll, I guess if I had to say, I'll, I'll say it's harder to break through now, honestly, as crazy as yeah. that sounds. No, I agree with that. It's just, yeah, like you said, everybody has access to everything now, and you can make a very great looking music video with your iPhone. And yeah, and it's the same thing with, I'm in, I'm in the podcast game. It's the same thing. I'm using my iPhone as a camera right now. It's not that hard to make a good looking type screen. And there's artists that you just go on YouTube tutorials. You can learn how to mix yourself. You can do it. You can make a whole album for very cheap. Like yeah, literally. Album. It's yeah. Uh, the the playing field is so even that it, it really makes it, it makes it that much harder for the talent to actually uh, push forward and push through. And uh, to the people that are doing it well, I, I I commend you. And even to the people who are <laughs> faking it, commend you yeah. too, because there's there's still something to it. But um, yeah. It is a. Uh, it's crazy that anybody could do it from their bedroom. You know, yeah. It's just like it's it's insane to think that 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 today's reality is possible. Like back when I was growing up, is like it's almost unimaginable. Yeah, and we're also saying that superstars are not a thing anymore. It might be because we know way too much about people. So there's bigger reasons why you wouldn't like an artist because they can do one thing on social media, and you're like, screw them. Back then, a lot of bad people. You just didn't know what they did in every time. <laughs> And they were just rock, they were just rocking out. But I also think part of the reason was when you bought an album in the two thousands, nineties, whenever it was, you even if you didn't like the album, you spent ten dollars on it. You're like, I'm playing this. I'm gonna find songs I like, and I'm gonna get my worth out of it. Now it's like, if I don't get through the album one time, like I'm just not. I have access to every song ever. Like I just don't have time to listen to an album again that I dislike. Yeah. A hundred percent. I, I'm proudly old enough to say that I, uh, I bought music when I was, when I was a youth and unless you turned on the radio, you didn't have anything else to listen to if yeah. uh, when you bought an album. So it was like, you kind of forced yourself to like it almost to an extent or like have some sort of memory or sentimental value attached yeah. to it. Um, now like it's you know I, I i try like anytime i sit down with an album or try and listen to it like i definitely try to give it a fair chance and go front to back but like i definitely have trouble doing it with a lot of albums and like yeah. i always try and give it the benefit of the doubt and power through but you know sometimes it just doesn't happen i'm also one of those lazy consumers to an extent these yeah. days so yeah it's 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 not as easy as it sounds to listen yeah. to an album front to back and you're also in the music curation game. So it's a mixture of like you're still trying to find new artists you like, but then balancing that with listening to the music that is just popular music. So tonight it is the 21st. Future Metro are dropping uh, We Don't Trust You. I'm not the hugest Future guy, but Superhero was one of my favorite songs of last year. It's mm-hmm. like, I don't know, if I, I'll listen once or twice if I don't like it. Like 
it's just it's too much time and effort to go through the album again. <laughs> it's sad to say that, but it's just the reality of it. No, I'm 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 very excited for Future tonight. Um, I, I'm a huge Future fan. There's always at least a handful, like let's say, call it four to seven songs per yeah. Future album that like I will run through for the rest of the year realistically um but yeah i'm I'm very excited for that it's hopefully if uh, hopefully it's a little reminiscent of, of some of the older projects he's put yeah. out are you happy i'm sure you're happy about it but your thoughts on the double album part of it uh i mean as long as each album isn't like 26 songs a piece yeah, i'll be please. happy with it <laughs> give me give I me can't. two give me two 14 song song projects and i'll be i'll be Perfect. a very happy man <laughs> even if one of my favorite artists like like if Cole dropped an album with twenty six songs, I'd be like, really? Like I don't even twenty six. Like I, just, it's too much to go through. Yeah, unless uh, yeah, uh, I mean I, I I'm one of uh, Drake's biggest fans. I I, I will it's proudly say that. But the first time go- I was waiting so long for for all the dogs, and yeah, I had by the time I got to like track twelve, I was like, holy shit there's another fucking 12 songs i gotta listen to on this thing yeah. like i don't have time for this <laughs> yeah and i don't think an artist necessarily always needs like so many features but when it's that long sometimes the features in like down the list keep you going you're like okay let me just like get to the uh yeah to the cole feature or let me just get to the SZA feature but sometimes these long albums don't have a lot of features you're like no like how are they gonna do this for 12 more songs Drake, yeah, like that, that. Al- do you bump that album still because i only listen to like what would pluto do at this point like i don't listen to that um album. I I bump Scary Hours a good amount. Um, the actual album itself, uh, nah, not not really. Yeah. Honestly, like I I don't really want Eight AM. I obviously love. Um, yeah, like there's a couple songs I go back to, but like the put the party song is crazy. Um, yeah. like I'm forgetting the name of it right now, but um, yeah, it's definitely my least played Drake album ever by a long shot. Yeah, like by and a I long hate- shot. I hate critiquing Scary Hours because all I ever wanted from Drake recently was just drop an album where you're rapping and he got like all the best producers. I loved it and he got the Cole feature. That being said, I feel like he heard Cole in the Secret Recipe do that one rhyme scheme thing and he's like, okay, let me do that for like four songs and he just does does it too much and like there's so many corny lines randomly on the Scary <laughs> Hours because he's going with one rhyme scheme so long. It's like you can sacrifice the rhyme to make a better yeah, line. No, nah, yeah. I scary hours I, I i love wholeheartedly i have no critiques for it whatsoever i i will respectfully disagree with you on, on that on that, <laughs> on that one point but um like he had an orange peel line on one of the songs and it was just like yeah, no like that was just, stuck under your nail like an orange peel or something so it, it was something like, like that yeah yeah it's something like that where i'm like you were just trying to fit the rhyme scheme and it's okay to like drift away from one rhyme scheme but yeah but you gotta you gotta commend drink. him for it yeah <laughs> yeah he he gave us what he wanted two j cole features and in one year and I, I honestly don't love them as much as i always wanted to love a drake and cole feature but that's just a me thing yeah this kinda, is a, yeah this is a mad hot take and i try not to have a lot of these on the internet a lot but i i don't like first person shooter mode i don't like that I, song i think cole did his thing but then drake starts naming random girls like justine charlie and i'm like this is the second half was not needed of that song yeah i just like yeah, i don't know i I, I hear you on that. I totally agree. I uh, I just I don't know. I that's I want if I want to ever hear Cole and Drake on a song, I want Evil Ways. I don't want first person shooter mode, and that yeah. first person shooter mode does not resonate with me at all. Yeah. Another this will be the last thing. Another issue in hip hop for me personally is people are too obsessed now with beat changes, and some songs don't need four beat changes. It's just too much. <laughs> There's a specific song on. Utopia, which I do not listen to whatsoever anymore. And it had, I think it's the one with Young Thug. It has four beat changes, and I like the first beat and I like the last beat. But there's two <laughs> beat changes in the middle, and it's just like, y'all are like the Schoolboy Q album. Love some of the beat changes, love a lot of the songs. Some of them, like Ohio with Freddie Gibbs, I'm like, wait, I want to, I don't like this middle beat. Like, yeah, I wanted, yeah. I wanted Freddie to rap on this first beat. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I totally hear you on that. I will definitely echo your sentiment. It's definitely become a fad. Um, sicko mode kind of i guess changed the game in yeah. that sense like drake, that was a great beat change I, drake drake did it very successfully uh early on in his career um but often 
times, I would say, if I rem- if I'm remembering correctly, it was often not a beat change to a more hype beat. It was to him getting to like the 40 underwater sound. So he could yeah, kind of yeah. just like slide for the last minute and 10 yeah. seconds of a song. Um, and now it's just like every song thinks that they need to yeah. turn it, turn it up in the last minute. Yeah. And a half. And it's <laughs> like, I, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little played out at this point. Yeah. And I like a beat change when like, maybe it's a different, it's the same sample or something, but it's just changed in a different way. So thank God for me on the Schoolboy Q album, one of my favorite songs out mm-hmm. right now, yep. the third half, like the third part of it, it's the same. It goes like transformed so perfectly into that beat that I like. But sometimes it's just a complete like new song, and you're like, "What? Like, what just happened?" Ex- yeah, I I completely agree. It definitely it, don't get me wrong. People do still do it tastefully, but uh, oftentimes it's it's unnecessary. Yeah, the worst is when you <laughs> like the beat that was currently on, and it's like for twenty seconds, you're like, "No, why do you why do you turn that off?" Or you love the second one even more, but it's like twenty seconds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but Dylan, thank you so much for coming on. I want to give you the opportunity to tell people where they can find you, whatever you got coming. Tell the people. Um, yeah, you could uh, find all of my content um, on Overtime Sound on Instagram and TikTok. Um, if for whatever reason you want to follow my personal Instagram account, which I don't recommend because <laughs> it's pretty boring, it's Overtime Dylan um, on Instagram. Um, but yeah, definitely uh, peep all the content that's coming out. I should have some good stuff lined up in the near future. Hopefully um, can lend my platform to a lot more artists um, who are up and coming and, and rising stars who will look back and uh, I'll be proud to say that I was their first or first of many interviews. But um, yeah. yeah, Adam, thank you uh, so much for having me on today. It was an absolute pleasure. Always love nerding out about yes. uh, something I'm so passionate about. That's the that's the best thing in the world. I love people who nerd out. It doesn't always have to be hip hop, but I'm always down even more when it is nerding out about some hip hop. If you stay to the end, thank you so much. Please like, subscribe. You can find me on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Adam Dash D A S H underscore, and you can find us on the Sound Centric Music Channel. Please submit your music because I am always down and trying to find new avenues to highlight you amazing artists. So thank you guys for tuning in. We will see you next time. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.